So this week I have a lot of sub days that I am requesting off for various reasons. We have a full day of conferences. I have an ELA curriculum rewrite that I'm doing. I also have some doctor's appointments and I'm getting closer to fall break and the kids have been working really hard on a couple of different projects that is making my room feel a little bit chaotic. So join me in this vlog guys as I get my room put back together, get everything organized, and I also get ready for making sure that when I have a sub, they have everything they need, but also for those days when, like last Friday, I get a migraine and I am not able to plan anything. So what do we do for those days? All right, join me and let's do this. Let's go. To do with my class. So I first wanna show you guys these Rube Goldberg projects. So the kids had to create a complex and y'all I put these pillows down because this like creates so much noise in my classroom and I pick it up in these videos so ignore those. But they're creating these really complex machines that are to solve a simple task. So I've already had two groups finish theirs. They've uploaded their videos into our learner management system and I am ready for these other ones to get done. Not only have we been working on this Rube Goldberg project for the energy transfer, so the kids have to be able to identify the different energy that's transferred as it goes from one object to another object to another, but we've also been working on a science fair because the kids, my fourth graders have swimming, so they're gone in the mornings. And in, in order to like combat this whole, oh, we don't really have anything to do because our schedule is a little wonky, our fifth and sixth graders are participating in a science fair. So it's our own little like Mac team science fair and they're really excited about it but they're also doing it with partners so um, they're working on that and we have to get those done this week as well so I feel like I have all these different projects that are happening in my room so let me show you like one of the other ones that the kids have and it's just like sitting there was like a huge mess in my classroom earlier so I have no idea what this mixture is um, but this is one of the other projects that my partner teacher was kind of supervising and making sure that everything was working out well and then I have this complex machine over here where the kids are working to let's see they have they, they drop something down here there's some other little devices that go here and it ends up dropping down there on that little Christmas light to turn off my lights right above so that was kind of their simple task that they wanted to be able to solve but it's just things like that that I feel like are driving me a little bit crazy <laughs> Just a little. But let me sit you down and I want to talk to you a little bit about my sub binder. It's been a really long time since I've updated my sub binder. In fact, when I was going through this binder originally, I have it totally emptied out right now. When I was going through this binder originally, y'all, it had things from like back four years ago. Oh bless, I can't believe I've gone that long without updating a binder because it's so important to have this and let me tell you a little bit why. So I feel like right now we've had some shortages with finding substitutes. So. I feel as though they try to pull different teachers or they end up putting other specialist teachers to be able to cover classrooms, especially when we have things like uh, CPM training or ELA curriculum rewrite, things that we have to be out for. We don't really have a choice for it. And so they put these teachers in the classroom and, and when we don't provide teachers with enough information on how to run our classrooms appropriately, it, it just causes frustrations, frustrations for them, it causes frustrations for the kids, and I almost feel like we also need to make sure that we're doing a justice to those guest teachers that are coming into the classroom, that we're making them feel as prepared as possible, because bless it, I don't think I would want to be a substitute in a classroom that's not prepared, or that's not giving me enough information for me to go off of, because everybody has their own ways of working things, which is fine, I feel like you just need to be make sure that you are crossing your T's, dotting your I's, and making sure that you're giving all that information to that guest teacher in a very easy format to read. So I, um, I was talking with one of the newer teachers in our building, and I was just mentioning what are some of the things that I would typically try to put inside of a sub binder, and I thought this was a perfect time for me to try and update it because I've been out quite a bit, uh, and it's, Perfect time for me to update it because I was having this conversation with this new teacher. But then again, I just, I also want to make sure that 
for when I have people come into my classroom that I don't think I'm you know as prepared for like last Friday y'all I had the worst migraine ever couldn't come to school I would just want to make sure that I'm fully prepared and I don't want to leave my partner teachers hanging by me not having everything so here's what I have I've always kept a sub binder I've always had one ever since kindergarten and so um, I recently just made this cover yesterday today one of these days i printed it out today i don't remember when i made it but i ended up making one of these and i'm having it in a spot inside of my classroom which is very very noticeable and that's a really really important piece because they need to be able to say oh here it is they shouldn't have to go digging through your stuff to be able to find a sub binder now it's like on those days where i, I can't get out like i can't even talk i can't even um get out of bed because i'm so sick they need to be able to find it so let me show you where in my classroom i have placed it okay so this is my desk area right here this is where I have some of my materials it's where I do my small groups and you're gonna notice that right up here I have a little bulletin board which has been very nice having actually I keep different checklists for myself or different information pages that are here uh, these are my jobs that are located up here and then just two of either web's depth of knowledge or um, some different instructional strategies that are on a ring that I constantly use and then I have my math books that keep all all of my answers there are inside of this little pocket and this y'all I literally just just push pinned it now I will be honest they don't stay on perfectly all the time like I have to be super gentle when I place things inside of it but it holds it for the most part well right above that you're gonna see it's like right in my face it says substitute binder read this first I wanted it to be something that a sub could very easily find so right when let me back up so right when they walk up they can automatically see oh there is a substitute binder that I need to look at in case I'm not able to put it out for them. So I felt like I was really trying to make sure that I had all of the different things that I needed inside of that binder. And I'm sure that as I go along, it's probably gonna grow, it's probably gonna change, and that's completely okay. I know this is probably a little bit of a weird angle, but that is gonna be fine. I think we're gonna make it. So like I said, I had my cover here, went on ahead and put my room number. I have some materials on this side with a sheet for taking attendance. So it's probably best you can't really see those. Um, um, and then I have a table of contents and it just really kind of gives the sub a general idea of what's going to be included inside of this binder. Um, I have my schedule inside and I did go to Target and ended up buying a set of dividers, which worked out really well. I just got to make the actual um little labels for them so then I have my checklist and I don't want to show you a ton of those but I have a homeroom checklist I have one for um, literacy studio which is you know my reading block and then I have one for math as well so all of those are in there with the kids names, so that the teacher can make sure that those students are in attendance of that class so once we go into that um, then I go into my procedures. Now these are common procedures that I have during the day. I ended up deciding to get rid of the first one, which was like a morning one that I had in here. Now I have a during the day procedures. I talk about the lights, what happens if a kid brings in birthday treats, what do I do with music because I have an echo inside of my classroom. The kids really like it. What do I do with pencils, which I'm very weird about. Oh, I made a sticky note about doing one for call and responses as well. But I have bathroom, nurse, what happens when they don't have an iPad and what happens when they're talking, not following directions. Um, end of the day procedures are more things like classroom jobs, making sure lights are all turned off and behavior cards. So all of those pieces are in there and I've talked about them in detail. Um, then I go into emergency contacts. Now my emergency contacts are people like the secretary, the nurse, um, the principal, all of those people that I feel like they would need to get in contact during the day. I've placed their phone numbers there. We have fire drill procedures, which I use bullets guys because I want it to be simple I don't want them to have to read a paragraph to figure out what in the world they're supposed to be doing so I can easily look here and say everybody line up grab this wait until this go on until this I wanted to make it very very simple to follow so I have 
all of those in there. And then I go in, and I, this is where I'm gonna put 504s and IEPs. Uh, then I go into behavior management plan. So this is where I talk a little bit about how we handle behavior management on our team. Um, how do I handle uh, consequences, which are logical consequences? How do we do anything with Dojo? And so what I did is I kind of gave them a gist of it. But then here, I use uh, these positive and negative Dojo sheets for the teacher to be able to fill out so as they're going on throughout the day they can mark anyone for positive dojos they can mark anyone for negative dojos and I will put those in for the next day because we do use classroom dojo as a team um, so that's kind of in there those are ones there's a bunch of extra ones in case they need to use them but that's where they can grab those pages then I start to do a general flow. Now I'm not all the way done with my general flow sheets because it's taking me some time to make sure that I am articulating it to the extent that if I do not have plans, what is this teacher going to do with my kids? I want them to understand what is it that they can do. So I have things like ideas for different morning meeting activities. I go through the arrival in the morning. I'm gonna end up having some for math, for reading, um, for what we do during our choice time, what are we doing for content and how can they find those materials. So I want them to be able to find everything and be able to pick up where I left off without having any sub plans. Now, doesn't mean I'm not ever gonna write sub plans. I'm always gonna write my sub plans unless, like last Friday, I couldn't because I was in so much pain with my migraine. So that's where this general flow sheet is really, really important. It gives the um, guest teacher a really good idea of what it is that they want to do with my class. And then finally, um, I have a while you were away. And so these are places where they can just put in any information. So I have absent learners. Um, I always give away one pride ticket winner. So whoever was the help most helpful, they were on, they were kind of on it. Um, they can write their name here. And then I have a sub ticket winner, which is something new that I'm trying out this year where I will take down names and then I'm gonna put them into a drawing and I'm gonna get them a sub, <laughs> basically is all it is. Get it, sub, substitute, sub, sandwich. <laughs> They're gonna get a sub sandwich um, for that those people who get identified as sub ticket winners. And then I have ticket for a space for students who just needed reminders but maybe did not get their dojos mark. And then any notes that need to be um, placed in there, she can place them right on that sheet. So that is it. That is the general idea of my substitute binder. Speaking of just getting things together, one of the things that I really need to get together are all of these papers that I have that are not organized that just need to get placed where they need to be. So I'm gonna spend some time. I'm gonna clean some of this stuff up um, and then hopefully start getting some of these printed out to place inside of my binder. So I cannot remember if I have shared this little tip before, but I ask parents at the very beginning of the year if they would like to volunteer. And I always ask for a variety of different volunteers, for people to come into school and to do things at school, people to do things at home. And I make like a group message with those people. And I will send out an email saying, hey, are you able to do A, B, or C for me if I send it home? So one of the ways that I send things home is by using the Lakeshore bags. I love, love, love these because they're so unbelievably durable. So I placed a couple of things that I need to be made into books because I just don't have the time to be able to do it, but parents love to be able to help. So I will send this home with a kid after I send out an email, put some instructions in there, materials that whatever it is that they might need to be able to complete the task and I'll send it home tomorrow. So thought I'd just share that. It's one of my favorite things. I need to work on creating my uh, graphic organizers for tomorrow. It's just gonna save me some time in the morning and then I don't have to stress and worry about it. 
I have to say really fast, I'm gonna do a little plug-in because I have made a ton of graphic organizers that I'm gonna show you guys right afterwards, but I use them for my bridging literacy method. So it is the structure in which I run my reading and my writing workshop. I combine them into one, which I call the bridging literacy method. And I have now created, which I'm very, very excited about. If you guys didn't watch the video about um, me holding myself accountable, go and watch it. It's super short, easy to watch type of thing. Um, but I talk about how I wanted to create a community of just somewhere for people to go to be able to be with other like-minded teachers who really wanna work towards a very similar goal. And within this community, I wanted to provide as much support as possible. Like I wanted to do, be able to give everything away that I utilize inside of my reading workshop, my reading and my writing workshop. So any graphic organizers that I use, checklists that I use, uh, books that I might be using and give as much advice as possible. So it's gonna have separate videos, there's gonna be blog posts, there's gonna be all different types. It's set up in like a forum site at the moment. Um, well, I've given away a lot of the graphic organizers that you're gonna see in just a moment. And uh, they're inside of that Bridging Literacy community. It's a it's my BLC membership site. So I'm re really, really excited about it. And I've gotten a lot of great people that are there, they're engaged, they're excited about it. And it just makes me happy that I'm able to help them in ways that I just wanna be able to help more because I don't feel like I'm doing enough of that. So um, in order to get into this membership or what you kind of get a part of this membership is you can either go monthly or you can go yearly. The monthly rate is $7 a month and then the yearly rate right now is $50 for the year. Um, if you are to sign up, you would get locked in at this price. So as the price increases as the site becomes bigger and bigger and bigger because that is my hope and dream for it to become something that is very successful um, so that I can continue making the videos, I can continue doing my live chats, so on and so forth. I, um, as it starts to get bigger and better, um, the prices are gonna increase and with that you guys would end up getting locked in at this price. So it's really, really a good idea to go ahead and get on it now so that you're locked in at these prices because they're really, really good prices for what you're gonna end up getting from it. Um, so you have those two options and what you're gonna get from it are the live replays. So this was something that I really, really struggled with guys and it was a really hard decision for me, but I struggled with um, taking down my live replays because I did want them to be up, but unfortunately they're just not doing um, they're not doing as well. And the purpose of having a live chat is to be able to have the engagement and the interaction and the talking with all of you. It's not the same. I could totally do a presentation in a video format in my classroom and it would totally be fine. The purpose of the live chat is to be able to engage and interact with my viewers who are on it. And so I decided to take those down and I'm gonna put them up as, as replays inside of the membership. So if you are a member of the BLC membership, the Bridging Literacy um, Community membership, then you will have access to the live replays. You're gonna have access to any other videos that I might put up, whether it's talking about a mentor text, explaining how I use a graphic organizer, different blog posts, different resources that I'm gonna give away for free. Um, all of that's gonna be included inside of it. So you're gonna notice that those live replays replays are not going to be available anymore. Um, they're going to be within that membership. And mainly it's one to get you guys to hopefully get engaged with me as much as possible. Like, not engaged, but engaged in the live chat itself. Um, but then also to add some benefit towards that BLC membership. Either way, I have that up. I'm going to leave a link down in the description box. So if you guys want to go and check it out, go and check it out. I am very, very proud of it. My husband has been working really, really hard with it. He has been helping me so much with it. So the website looks fantastic. Go and check it out. I just love it. Um, but right now I need to make my graphic organizer anchor charts. Um, so I'm gonna make these bad boys and I'll show you what they look like afterwards. First one up, character analysis.
Okay, so I have to say that I'm a little bit bummed because my printer, I guess when it, when I print multiple copies of certain pages, it like pushes it through and it feeds it super weird. So they're a little bit misaligned. One of them is super wonky, but it's fine. We're gonna deal, it's gonna be great. The kids are not gonna even care, to be honest, at the end of the day. So let me show you the graphic organizers that I had to print for tomorrow. Okay, so here is the first one. One of them is a vocabulary graphic organizer, and this one is for my fourth graders. I'm introducing a few vocabulary words from our text that we read today. Um, so this one just goes into, it's write the sentence from the book. Um, your thoughts on the definition, so getting them to think about some of the context clues that come from it. They, so they have to give the definition what they think it means. They have to give the context clues. Then they find the definition, and then they're going to write some synonyms to go along with it so they have three words is typically what I end up choosing from a text and then we keep it um, in a digital book that the kids end up making but they use the graphic organizer in like pick collage to be able to complete it so that's the first one the next one is a character change so with my sixth graders, we've been working really hard on understanding character change and specifically the events that are causing the character to change and how the character is reacting to those events. So really kind of digging deeper and looking into that process. Um, but now what we're doing is we're going to take the same graphic organizer. We're going to utilize it for our own writing. So we're going to take our characters out of our writing. We've already identified the change because that was a previous lesson. Uh, and now we're going to dig a little bit deeper and find the events. So they're going to brainstorm their events to be able to uh, revise their writing and then get ready to submit by next week. Then we have uh, this one is an extrinsic characteristics. So I, I've always, um, I always kind of tiptoe on this just a little bit because I don't want kids to learn that they judge people. I, it's not a judgment piece. So I, I want to always make sure that I talk to my kids very carefully about extrinsic characteristics and what this means. But when we talk about extrinsic characteristics and getting kids to be able to see it, it's like saying, oh, you have a wedding ring. That's an extrinsic characteristics. What can we infer from me having a wedding ring? Oh, that she's married. Okay, perfect. So it's making observations like that. Um, another observation is a young girl in... Sorry, I don't know why sometimes I just like get on a roll. Um, but in the book, Each Kindness, I believe it is, the girl is wearing like a spring dress and the person who is speaking, the character who's speaking, uh, says, why is she wearing a spring dress when it's like freezing outside and it's winter? Well, those are some of the extrinsic characteristics. Well, what can we infer about that? What do we know uh, what's happening based on all of the other pieces? So kids are able to make inferences based off of the intrinsic, or I'm sorry, the extrinsic characteristics characteristics of their characters in a text. So we're talking about that piece, we're identifying them within the text, and then we're also trying to figure out what are the qualities that we can infer about them. So something that I like always say is I don't wear a ton of color. I don't love color. It's just not my thing. I'm more of a plain Jane. Like I just like the very neutrals and calming colors. So these are conversations that we end up having, but I am very, very careful to say that we're not going to make judgments on people. So we have a lot of those conversations. So yeah, okay. But as you can see, this one came out super wonky. <laughs> it's fine, it's gonna be okay. Um, but that's one of them. And then the next one is gonna be a character analysis. I don't necessarily need this one for tomorrow, um, but I wanted to go ahead and have it anyways. So this one is really just looking at what does the character say, what does the character think, what does the character do, what does the character feel, and then it comes up with a character trait. So it's finding the evidence to be able to support the traits. I went on ahead and I added the bullets because it just helps to keep them on track. So those are my graphic organizers that I wanted to share with you. Okay, so that are, those are the graphic organizers. I wanted to share those with you because those are up for free. If you are a BLC member, please know that the vocabulary one is gonna be posted. So it should have been posted this weekend. Um, if not, give me until Monday and I will definitely have that one up and a little bit of an explanation of how I utilize that like in further detail. So you guys have a better idea of how to put that into practice. So, 
got my graphic organizers ready. Um, it is six o'clock. I should probably go ahead and start heading home. Blaine is starting wrestling today. He's really, really nervous. It's just so flippin' adorable. I love him to death, but it's gonna be good for him to have another sport to be able to play because he has just so much energy. Um, so he is doing that. Ian is at home. I'm gonna get my things packed up. I'm gonna work on my sub plans at home so that I can share a little bit more of those tomorrow. See you then. So I have a really, really busy day today. Uh, in fact, we have one teacher that is out for a meeting or some training or something to that extent. And then I have a doctor's appointment right at the very, very end of the day. So I have to leave a little bit before the kids are gonna go. My other partner is gonna take care of my class to be able to dismiss them so that I can get there. That means I don't have a ton of time in order to video today. So I was out all day yesterday. I had conferences from eight o'clock in the morning all the way until seven o'clock. They went really, really well, but we were very, very booked. So there was very little time to take a breather, but I'm so glad that I have conferences pretty much almost over. We have one more evening commitment, one more morning commitment, but those are like the contractual pieces. So we have those as pretty easy days. We made Monday a really full day to yesterday a really full day. So huh, I'm feeling really, really good about this, guys. November is such a crazy month for me, and I think it just goes by so quickly, and there's just so much for me to have to get done during this time. I'm feeling pretty good, but I wanted to show you guys because I ha was not able to finish getting all of the pieces for my sub binder together, but I did want to go ahead and show you how I left everything for when I had a sub yesterday. Now this is not exact, so keep that in mind, but what I try to do is I always put my binder first, and then I had my lesson plans, but if, so if you want to take a little peek of what my lesson plans look like, it's really, really simple. Um, I do a table within Word, I try to keep it as simple as possible, have my times and what block it is, the instructions here, and I try to break them down to where it's like the steps are broken down, and then I have the materials list here. So that is pretty much it. I usually bold or underline some of the most important parts that I really want them to pay attention to, um, and she was really kind and left a lot of little notes as they were going through to kind of keep me in touch of where they are. So. I left that there. I had my folder and my lunch folder as well are here. And then I left her my morning message. So I had some morning activities that they, that they were going to complete here. I left her my read aloud that they were going to do with theme. And then I left them a practice for them to be able to do. And then I had as well um, the math practices for any of the students that were working there. So I kept it all in order. So it was nice and neat. So this is the view that she saw when she walked into the classroom, which I feel like that looks really nice. It's very organized and very, you know, put together. <laughs> Now I also have to say that the Rube Goldberg projects are finally finished. Today is gonna be the reflection day, but I have to be honest, they left my room a little bit of a mess. So just to help kind of give my mind frame right to start the day in a really great way, I'm gonna spend some time and I'm just gonna clean. I'm gonna listen to a podcast, I'm gonna put that on. I'm still listening to True Crime Obsessed. Love, love, love them guys, like I'm truly obsessed with them haha <laughs> that's funny um, but I'm gonna spend a little bit of time cleaning up and I think that's just gonna make me feel a little bit more ready to have a really good Friday today was wear your bright colors and your jeans day which makes me feel really good that I got to wear jeans however I don't really have a ton of bright colors this was the best I could find um, so I sport Darth Vader on world kindness week <laughs> <laughs> he needs to learn to be kind. It's fine. <laughs> I hope that was able to give you guys some really good ideas about what to put into your own sub binder. I am going to put this product up for sale in my store if you don't want to have to go through the whole situation of making your own. I'm also going to put in the wording that I'm using for all of the other pieces except for anything that might be a little bit more private. I'm not going to put those in there. Um, but you're going to see some of the wording that I use for different procedures, um, for any of the drills, for any of the um, common day items, or just the general, here's what my class would look like 
if I was there type of situation. So it is going to be up in my store. You guys can go and check it out. And yeah, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It is getting late. My son is probably getting ready to go to soccer. Blaine is. And he had called me today, guys. It was the weirdest thing. I was getting all the kids ready for school for the end of the day um, at the school and Ian calls me and I'm like, hello? And of course I'm worried because why does my son call me? He never ever calls me. And he was like, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, I'm at school. He was like, oh, I know. I just wanted to call you. I'm like, I'm at school. And he's like, I know. And I was like, no, I'm teaching. He goes, oh, you're still teaching. It was the weirdest thing ever. I feel like, if, did he miss me? I have no idea. So I'm gonna go home, figure out what's going on there, and then get ready to start uploading some materials into the Bridging Literacy Community membership. Woo! Very, very wordy. The BLC membership. So I'm gonna start working on that and then getting my sub plans ready for next week. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.